I still remember in my third grade, I made an important decision in my life. At that time, I didn't know it was an, it will become an important decision, but it became an important decision in my life. So what is the decision and how I took it? It's simple. At that time, some of my classmates and friends are losing their focus on studies and going for bad habits. So what I thought was, there's a chance for me also to go for bad habits. So what I did was, I was looking for a hobby or some other, some other things so that I can focus on. I looked around and I have seen my dad's profession. He's an electrician, not an engineer. I really like his work. At that time, I felt he's like, he's like a magician. Like, he will get a 5D machine and he will repair and make it work. Also, he create new stuff. I really like his work. So what I thought was, what about pursue my dad's profession? So that was the first milestone in my technology career. So after this, in each grade, this interest got doubled. So I remember in fourth grade, I, I started to learn things from my dad and I started buying books in electrical. I didn't understand much of the things, but I will say I got something. I started creating stuff. I started creating circuits. I, I created stuff using DC motors, transformers. It was very interesting. So that interest got doubled and in seventh grade, that interest got an upgrade. That is the computers. I got an introduction to computers at that time and the computing, the concept of computing. I'm really interested in that concept. The computing concept is we can give instruction to a machine and then the machine will execute that instruction. So for example, if you want to say the computer like, I love you, you can write a program and the computer will say, I love you. Simple, right? I really like that concept. So, up to seventh grade, I have these three interests, that is electrical, electronics and computer science. So after that, I decided to focus more on to these subjects. So I searched, like in high school, in normal schools, they don't have these subjects. So I asked to my cousins and relatives, like, is there any possibility to learn these subjects as a core subject? I searched and I found there is a school like technical schools under ISRD. They have these subjects as a core subject. So I was very happy at that time. So I chose it. I got an admission. There was an entrance examination and all. I got an admission to a technical school. I was very happy because I'm learning the stuff that I'm interested on. I feel like heaven at that time because I got formal education in what I'm interested on. I, I, had, I, I could build a strong foundation on circuit building, computer science, computer programming, and everything. So in 10th standard, I, I remember me and my friend plan to build an operating system. It's a dumb idea, but it's, it's very difficult also, but we have that energy. There is a language called QBasic, it's a simple programming language, so we have a plan to build an operating system using QBasic. So everything went well up to 10th. After 10th, I made a huge mistake. I chose biology as the core subject in 11, 10, 12. Just imagine how stupid I am. My main interests are electronics, computer science, and electrical, but for 11, 10, 12, I chose biology. So what happened? What happened? I just follow my parents' instructions. I was dumb, I agreed. What happened was, 
There is a convention in Indian families. Just follow your career or uh, studies of your elder brother or elder sister. So my elder sister actually pursued biology as a core subject. So I just took it. My parents said, uh, son, you, you can just take this course, it is very good. So I was dumb and I just followed. So after two weeks, I realized how dumb I was. So I just planned to quit. But again, I thought like, I respect science. I really respect science. And biology is not a bad science at all. But for me, it's bad because my interests are in different subjects. So what I did was, I made a plan. The plan was, I will learn biology, but along with that, I will pursue my interest. So I was trying to correct my uh, wrong decision into a right decision. What I did was, for the 11th and 12th, I hang around with computer science guys, I sit with them for the project, discuss ideas, and I could learn both stuff at the same time. So after 12th, I will say, I made a wrong decision into a right decision. So after 12th, you know, regular stuff, engineering and medicine, you know. I choose engineering, not because everyone choosing it. I choose engineering because of my passion, because I love the, those subjects. I got an admission in a local college near to my home. I choose electronics and communication, okay? So after two months, I will say I was slightly depressed. There was two reasons. The syllabus is outdated. You know that. I am learning the stuff that I already learned in high school. Because in high school, I was in technical school, right? The second thing, I didn't get any friends with, with, with his the same interest like me. I used to talk to students and I asked, why did you take engineering or why did you take ECE? So here are some replies. So one of the relatives said, electronics and communication engineering, ECE, is easy to learn. <laughs> okay, fine. The next, someone said, like, I got an entrance examination, good rank, and some of my relatives said, uh, you can pursue your C's, it's a good course, and you will get a job. And some said, I'm sure that after engineering, I will get an IT company, so I will be rich. Okay, this all fine. This all fine, but my problem is, I have to find some friends who are having the same interest like me. That doesn't stop me. Actually, this request doesn't stop me in doing what I'm interested on. I, I was doing a lot of things. I was learning new stuff. At that time, I got a computer also. So just imagine, I was learning new computer programming, languages, then uh, creating new projects. So after two years, I will say, I was slightly. Why? Because there is a group called a research group in our college. Research group. So in research group, what we are doing is we are doing projects for our college. We learn new stuff and implement in, in our college. So the thing is, it is having 15 students which is having the same interest like me. Again, heaven, heaven feeling. Because that's what I that was the main uh, purpose of pursuing engineering. I have to find similar interest points. So 15 students, which is having the same interest. So we discussed a lot of projects, we hacked together, we learned new programming language, we created a lot of projects. It was a milestone in my career. My engineering became meaningful because of that group. So after that, again, you know, the main project, right? We have to do our main project. So I have observed other students, and what they're doing is they're going to project institutes, okay, so-called project institutes, and they have a ready-made project. 
and those guys will give this project and some documentation and they will exhibit. So that's a trend. What I did was, I decided to take risks and I planned to do the project alone. And I planned to do the project in my interest, like computer science, I have to merge all my interests in this project. So I searched in the internet and I found robotics is the one. It's a multidisciplinary branch of engineering which integrates all the engineering domains, computer science, electronics and everything. So I decided to pursue my uh, project in robotics. So which project? That is the next question. So I have watched some YouTube videos and I found a robot called Kismet from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. It's a social robot, meaning it can interact with people. It can talk, it can express emotion. I really like that robot. It's pretty expensive and uh, a research, uh, it's a research based robot actually. I decided to create a clone of that robot. Again, a risky decision. I got funding from my college, like 20,000 rupees or something. I created a low cost version of that robot which can talk, which can express emotion and some image processing capabilities and all. Luckily, that project was a huge success. I got uh, recognition from a lot of media and uh, it was a bumper hit, I will say at that time. I was very happy. But after that, things didn't go well. At the end of engineering, we have the placements, you know. I don't have any idea uh, what will I do after engineering. I know all these uh, technologies, but I didn't have any idea. And at that time I had some education loans also. So future studies, not immediately, but uh, a job maybe. But what job? I don't know. I started attending interviews and I started rejecting. I mean, I am being rejected. Why? Because my focus was on projects, not attitude exams. I failed miserably. I count up to 20 companies, after that I didn't count, the list goes on. Just imagine, I attended almost all kind of companies, BPOs, banks, IT companies, I don't know. It's keep on going, the list goes on. I was actually crying in front of my mother because all my classmates got placed, except me. I was not bad at all. I have a good academic uh, credits and all and I'm uh, not bad in technical. Uh, knowledge also. One of the interviewers said, you are not belong, belonging to this company because uh, according to your skill, you better to pursue some research or something. Anyway, I didn't get in any companies. But at the end of engineering, luckily, I got in the robotics firm. It was, I will say it, it, is, it was a lucky because those guys actually saw my clips in uh, media and uh, I, they offered me a job. I was too happy because I'm getting a job in which the, the technology I'm interested in. I started my career in 2011 and I worked for four years, three to four years. And at that time again, not only the job, I used to write tutorials, I had a blog, I used to create YouTube videos relating to robotics and all. I used to help uh, students uh, that is doing MTech and PhD for their project and it was like going very well. In 2014, I just quit the job and uh, I started to be, an, I, I planned to be an independent researcher. So I planned to uh, start a company, like startup in robotics. So from 2014 to 2019, these are the things that happened. This all happened because of my passion in robotics. I have written seven books in robotics. I have reviewed eight books in robotics. I completed my master's in robotics and automation. I worked in uh, the famous Carnegie Mellon University Robotics Institute. 
And I have won a lot of international competition, robotics competition, and the list goes on. I'm not boasting about my achievements, but the thing is, if you have that passion in any technology or any, any area, you can do wonders. I'm just an example, a small example, you will say. So the passion is the key thing. So if you don't have that passion, keep looking. And in 2019, I'm just in front of you in the tech spot. Okay? So what I'm trying to say is the passion is the key, and if you don't have that, keep on looking. And I have a few advices for, for those guys who are planning to pursue robotics. The first thing is, get some formal education. There are some good universities in India as well as abroad. Get some good degree, and be updated always. I'm a student actually, and keep on learning stuff. In each day, I will, I will learn from Facebook feeds. There are some lot, a lot of pages, right? So I, I used to read stuff. And the third thing is be adaptive. Because maybe you are focusing on one technology, and that, that may be outdated soon. So you have to adapt always. So the three things, get some education, formal education, be updated and adaptive. I wish to see more robotics engineers from India as well as abroad, and I'm really uh, hoping to see like robotics can fix a lot of real world issues facing by humanity. And I'm also planning or I'm hope hopeful to collaborate with those kind of projects in the future. Thank you.